Screw it. No, really, I've just had enough of being afraid. I've spent over a year cowering behind Patreon, just barely getting by with no engagements on YouTube. I've gone through breakdowns, reinventions, and so many pivots, I've freaking come full circle. This is my last attempt to bring Pokemon Journey back to YouTube. I tried doing the link to the Patreon thing, but people apparently found it too much of a promo, so once again, screw it. I'm doing one last round of allowances, and if Japan comes for me again, I'm gonna drop it from YouTube forever, but then I'm gonna get a second job, I'm gonna save up my money, and pay the fine personally when I finally visit at Japan and I will do it with a smile on my face. So what's this? It's Wade's Pokemon Journey again, but with no Pokemon music, distorted audio, and shrink wrapped visuals with a filter. On a stick. But most importantly, it's also completely demonetized. I will be making zero dollars on any of these videos on YouTube, no matter how many ads you watch or even if you pay for premium. So if you want me to keep making new episodes monthly, go to my Patreon, please. Sorry, I'm still half Canadian. <clears throat> I'm uploading the old series there daily. I'm up to episode 12 at the time of recording. Full, uncut, original episodes with actual clips on a dedicated video player, plus all new episodes from 194 to 198 are up there now as well, with new episodes every month, all free to watch with no pledge needed. And if Patreon goes under since they're making very concerning decisions right now, screw it again! I'll find another place and link it below. This is fair use, this is free advertising, and now it is volunteer labor. So in other words, if you can't give to the Patreon, that's fine. It's supply and demand, taste change, and I'm okay with going out of fashion. I can get another job. I'm just letting you know that I'll need the support of patrons now more than ever if you want me to be able to upload these YouTube-friendly journey episodes weekly rather than monthly or even worse. So there's that, but I'll also sweeten the deal. If I can hit the milestone of 1,000 patrons donating even $1 by Christmas next year as thanks for allowing me to keep this going full-time, I will do a full-length, cameo-filled, Deep dive review of, oh gosh, <clears throat> of Pokemon Live. Those who have been in the know understand how big this is. Pokemon Live is my one more day. I don't want to. I dread it in a way. But if I hit that milestone, I will be so grateful that that will give me the strength to do it. Well, that's all I have to say. Time to face Showpro and walk backwards into hell, and I hope you all enjoy it. This is, now and always, Swade's Pokemon Journey. Important disclaimer to prevent comment hemorrhaging. During my Pokemon journey, I will not talk about the following points unless the show contradicts itself on one of said points. Number one, how screwed up the Pokemon world's culture is to condone legalized cockfighting and to establish a rite of passage for all 10 year olds to leave home for years to pursue a cockfighting career. It's been said or thought about by literally everyone, therefore it is impossible for me to add to it. It's a fantasy world, it's just how it is, as long as they remain consistent in their mythology, that's all that matters. Number two, how Ash doesn't age, neither does Bart Simpson. Number three, inconsistencies between between the game and the show, particularly the battles. Changes need to be made in adaptations, so unless something doesn't make sense within the rules that the anime sets, it won't be discussed. This includes levels, stats, or moves. Please don't comment about any of the above unless you want to look really ignorant. Also, don't forget the original script was written nearly 10 years ago. I will make minor adjustments as needed, but you know, be nice. Now, on with the show. Episode 1. Pokemon. I choose you. I want to be the very best, exclaimed Jason Page in his best Bon Jovi impression. A generation of kids' ears pricked up and all were intrigued. I've actually talked about the opening theme for Pokemon before. I talk about it in the very first online video I ever made. Good luck finding that, I can't. But it's still my absolute favorite opening to a kids' show. More than DuckTales, more than Gummy Bears, more than Digimon or Yu-Gi-Oh or any other dub opening, this one is just what sold me on the whole dang show. Page just gives that earnestness, man. He does want to be the very best, and this world is worth fighting for, and don't dream it, be it! Wait, hold on. I also loved it, and still love it for the fact that I never once even considered that there was some kind of moral conflict in owning and training these creatures thanks to this one line. Again, he's so sincere. This isn't a forceful comment like, change into digital champions to save the digital world, or it's time to d d d d d rule. No, you're my best friend and this world needs defending. I know you can say it's propaganda, but gosh dang is it good propaganda. So we're hyped out of our seats and pushing our eyeballs against the glass of our CRT screen. How do they open it? With probably the most perfect opening they could have gone with. This is an amazing hook, and it's also amazing from a marketing perspective. Those who have played the games get a kick out of seeing the opening screen again, and then they're shown visually that now they get to see what it's like in the world they've been enjoying in glorious animation and color. Here's the other side of the coin though. Say, like me at the time, you never played the games, or maybe just saw the ads for them on TV. You know that these are video game sounds, so you understand that this is based on a video game. So if you like the show and want to be just like Ash and go on a grand adventure, you can. Just buy the dang game. All without a single plug or product placement. Speaking of Ash, here's how our hero is introduced. 
a hyperactive, loud nerd who can't get to sleep. He also has the coolest mum ever, whose parents let them watch TV when they couldn't sleep, at least in that decade. Heck, back then it was a luxury to even have a TV in your room, at least for me. Now, the main thing I want to talk about in the first episode is just how different of a protagonist Ash really is from your standard kid's anime fear, at least to begin with. Average kid who's really nice and sweet, yet painfully average, is going about his regular life when he suddenly receives the call to adventure through no real fault of his own, usually through some kind of power that puts him over others. He's reluctant at first, but through friendship or world-shattering stakes, he's won over, starts enjoying himself. There are seriously so many kids anime that begin this way. But Ash can't wait for his call to adventure. He craves it. This is something he has wanted his entire life. It's like a teen finally getting their driver's license. It's relatable in that way. He wants to be the hero so badly, and then he's hit in the face with the reality stick. He's not encouraged on by a magical fairy saying that only he can defeat the MacGuffin menace. Quite the opposite. He's immediately pipped to the post in his freaking pajamas by a stuck-up jerk who gets an inherent advantage in life simply due to his lineage. He is forced to pick up an inferior starter Pokemon after a hilarious scene in which the character ostensibly meant to be his mentor trolls the living snot out of his student. That one was also taken by a kid who wasn't late. Why did he leave the empty Pokeballs there? Professor Oak, that is stone cold. And then he's thrown into the harsh world after being humiliated by his supposed protection in said harsh world in front of the few townspeople who came to see them off by giving them all severe electrical trauma. His only comforting words are from his mother after she was electrocuted by his son's pet for 14 straight seconds. I counted. Don't forget to change your underwear. Day. More heartfelt parting words between a mother and son were never before spoken. He then, almost completely disillusioned, has to earn the trust of his companion, Pikachu. But Pikachu hates him. A lot. Ash tries his best, but his naivety and bullheadedness sour even his most sincere attempts at reconciliation. Our hero? He then goes against all that he's been taught by engaging with Pokemon without the guaranteed protection of his Pokemon, and gets both him and Pikachu attacked. Even now he wants to be a hero, and even now he gets rejected for his hubris. It's only after he offers his life as a glorified peace offering and pretty much hits rock bottom that things finally start to get better. Even then, Ash remains imperfect. He still stole private property. It's almost a subversion of the hero's journey when you think about it, and that takes Pokeballs to do on a first episode of anything, let alone a kid's genre steeped in traditional tropes. This is a hero who is truly an everyman, an every kid, and the thing is he remains that throughout most of the first season. When you really think about it, there is nothing special about Ash. What, he has a magical fighting pet? Everyone does! In fact, he starts out a loser and remains that way until he starts to claw his way out of his own self-imposed personality flaws. What is more relatable than that? Even his friggin' Pokédex tells him he's out of his depth. It also comes out into open fields to steal food from stupid travelers. Throughout the whole episode, the theme seems to be, this world is cruel, unrelenting, and bigger than you can imagine. But you can make it better by forgetting yourself and making their lives richer. Except Misty. Screw Misty. Bold direction, unique take, awesome opening episode. I will give that a master ball. Here's the list of my ratings, and that's what Master Paul is. Yep. Trivia. Now, those of you who have been around for the long haul know that I have always shouted out Bulbapedia, and in particular the Japanese-English episode comparison site, Dokusu's Backpack. And I'm proud of the fact that I did that a decade before the big plagiarism thing this year. But I feel I really need to re-emphasize now that while the highlights and the thoughts are all my writing, most of my trivia was sourced directly from the Bulbapedia page or from Dokusu's amazing work. Links to the appropriate pages are in the description. But yes, most of the interesting things in this episode can be related to being the beginning of the series, such as being the only episode without Team Rocket for over 600 episodes, or the only episode where Pikachu is actually put in Ash's Pokeball. It's also kind of distracting that they hadn't quite gotten the pronunciation of Poke down quite yet, so everyone sounds like they're talking about chick folk dancing. Now take these, your Pokedex and Pokeballs. Whereas in terms of edits, one interesting one is here, when Ash is scolded by Misty for mistreating Pikachu. You'll notice this one frame that's held a little too long, but this is actually where they cut out Misty showing Ash what the five fingers said to the face. I still don't understand how electrocuting a crowd is fine, yet a slap to the face for abusing animals is somehow taboo, but there you go. There's also a point where Ash tells Pikachu to open their mouth and tell them what's wrong, and Pikachu just cheekily opens his mouth in his face. In Japanese, this is still there to demonstrate he's being difficult, but also because of the bane of localizations everywhere, the untranslatable pun. Here it's referencing that the word for story, hanashi, sounds similar to the phrase no teeth, which is hanashi. So Pikachu's basically saying, what do you mean? I have teeth in the most schoolyard bully way possible. And finally, strangely enough, Ash's mum had some even less tender words for Ash in the Japanese version. In English it's the infamous, don't forget to change your underwear, but in Japanese she says to remember to change into your pajamas when you sleep, even if it's the dirty ones he's wearing. <laughs> so touching. Who's that Patreon? Patreon?
It's it's way. Way. Yeah, oh, you don't have just talk already. Already. I mean, Sorry, I'll get back to the Patreon questions in the next one, I promise. But I just want to address one increasingly common refrain in the comments, which is why I don't show my face anymore. Yeah, it's weird to think about, but I used to be a producer with a human face. No need for face reveals, I never hit it. I just stopped for convenience's sake because I'm really bad at memorizing scripts of filming, even with a teleprompter. It's so bad, in fact, that it was faster for me to edit this avatar together than it was to sift through and edit my performance. Also, I just feel awkward watching myself act. Besides, I mean, here I am, but I'm not sure why you wanted me to do a face reveal. I mean, face reveals don't win subscribers. No, but I bet they help. Oh, Extra special thanks to Brandon K, Calvin Atkinson, John G. Robertson, Jonathan Johnson, Matt Stores, Marie Spear, Mystic Samurai 1983, The Dark Master, Trey McGowan, Winters King, and Wolfram.